Good afternoon. My name is Ahmed Alostez. I am, have uh, the pleasure of uh, being here today uh, to talk about uh, the exciting material of graphene and its application to our nation's infrastructure back in, uh, home at U.S. <clears throat> so let's start with this clip from Senator Wicker. Today, this room is going to make history because I think the fact that we have people here from all over the world interested in graphene, interested in uh, where we are, but more importantly, what, uh, where we can go and what we can become from graphene, it just speaks volumes. So let me officially welcome you. All right, so one of the world's biggest problem is the climate change. And the report to the United Nations indicates that climate change during the last 50 years increased natural disasters by five folds. That accounts for 50% of all natural resources since natural resources were reported. This also accounts for around 45% of the deaths, 74% of the economic cost that is because of the uh, climate change. Okay. Because of that climate change and uh, the natural disasters, the nation's uh, uh, infrastructure has been affected. So basically, <clears throat> we have collapsed infrastructure back home at, in, in the U.S. More than 10% of U.S. bridges are obsolete. They, they cannot be used. Uh, a lot, which is around 60,000 bridges. Okay. A large amount of the roads needs repair. Okay. Also issues, okay, when we are talking about infrastructure, we are not talking only about bridges and the roads. There are 18 sectors of infrastructure, including the water uh, resources. <clears throat> so basically, the ASCE, which is the American Society of Civil Engineering, has been putting what's so called a report card, to give a grace for the 18 sectors. And in every sector, the report card indicates a C or below. Last year was the best year, and, and the report card showed a C. Before that, it was like a D and a D minus. Okay. This is what promotes the nation to pass a bill, which is called the infrastructure bill, that got approval from both sides in the Congress, and it was signed by the President recently. So how graphene can help and where it can take us? Okay, so graphene is a wonder material. It has so many interesting properties, but at the same time, it has its own challenges. Okay, and when we are designing material or designing infrastructure, what we need to keep in mind was so-called a performance-based design. Look into what performance and what engineering property is it, driven, is it deriving that performance. The answer to that question based on the physics law is what we need when we design a new material. So there is no recipe that can fit all. It's how you design the graphene, how you design its, infra, its interface, how we design the chemistry, the distribution, sometimes one solution that can be good for one, it may not be good for the other. So <clears throat> graphene is a multifunctional material. It has interesting mechanical, thermal, and electrical properties. If it is designed correctly, and it can be used as an additive, so some of the main materials that are used in the infrastructure, including cement, asphalt, composites, coatings on, on rebars. All of those are technologies that are all technologies, but now with the presence of this new material, it can tailor the property. So we can tailor the property in what's so-called either a push or a pull as we do the research. It derived this with a pull more than a push. What a property need to be improved and how we can utilize the new material to derive that property. 
So a couple of issues that we have is the carbon dioxide, which many people, they believe that contributes to the climate change. As I was discussing with my colleague this morning, we want to keep the sea, the carbon, we want to keep it on the surface of the globe. We don't want it to be in the air. We don't want to pump it inside. And there are efforts of printing carbon materials out of CO2, so it can be a solution rather than being a problem. Landfill is another problem, and that also a problem that can be turned into solution with the proper utilization. Okay, a collaboration with uh, uh, colleagues from uh, Rice University is, is looking into turning a trash into a graphene using what's so called flash graphene, or flashing that material, you change the problem into a solution. Okay. <clears throat> so where we are, where we want to be, we want to use this new material as a mean, basically, for improving not only the nation's infrastructure, but also military and the space. There are many lessons that are there in the military and the space that has not been utilized fully in the civil infrastructure. Both of those other sectors, they contribute also their own challenges that they share with the civil infrastructure. And <clears throat> problems or challenges that we may have is scalability, a chain supply is another one, and standardization of the process. Okay. This is why at our center, Center of Graphene, we are collaborating with NIST, National Institute of Standards, and we are part of the Technical Committee on Nanomaterial, that is TC229, to come up with the standards, and we are establishing a core test facility that will control, basically, or give uh, some documents, uh, the best practice documents for, for companies when using the graphene. And as I started with a clip from our senator from great state of Mississippi, I will end up with another quote from him. Vice Chancellor for Research Modern, the University of Mississippi. Ole Miss's work with NASA includes research on graphene, a material with transformative potential for many applications, including spaceflight. In fact, this past weekend, NASA launched a graphene research payload to the International Space Station. With this, I conclude and I thank all of you. Thank you.